much of our politics, so much of our debate is backward looking, when in fact, the future is now. If you think about the climate warming, it's happening. If you think about AI, you think about the ability for machines to learn at a pace that will far outstrip humanity, it's happening now. Yeah, and Wall Street and Washington, for sure, way behind, barely even speak the language. We're gonna have new ethical debates, new political debates, new business debates. All of these will be radically upended, and it's gonna require humanity to think at a pace we're not used to. Well, thanks for doing this. We really, really uh, appreciate it. And sure. I mean, just to sort of set the stage, uh, I think we sort of have your shared concern uh, about AI and about one, people not really understanding what it is, but also understanding sort of the, the potential consequences for humanity. Um, no problem. I might occasionally need to stop and check uh, for an emergency coming through. Uh, That's regarding understood. <laughs> they said to happen, fortunately. Uh, a couple arrows stuck in my head. The, uh, sorry? What's that? I have Bolero stuck in my head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, good. Let's plunge in. Okay. I mean, at the very basic, when you think, like, how should people think about artificial intelligence? If you're going to explain it to one of your younger uh, children, you would say artificial intelligence is what? Uh, it's just digital intelligence, and um, as the algorithms and the hardware improve, that digital intelligence will exceed biological intelligence by a substantial margin. It's obvious. When you say that we'll exceed human intelligence, at some point soon, the machine's going to be smart, not just smarter, like exponentially smarter than any of us. Ensuring that the advent of AI is good, or at least we try to make it good. Seems like a smart move. But we're way behind on that. Yes, we're not paying attention. Do we worry more about what, what name somebody called someone else than whether AI will destroy humanity? That's insane. Before we get, get to like solutions. And, and we're like children in a playground. This could be a huge problem for society. What are the scenarios that scare you most? Humanity really is not evolved to think of existential threats in general. We're involved to think about things that are very close to us, near term, to, to be upset with other humans, and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. Um, but then in recent decades, recent, just really in the last century, we had nu nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming, which could destroy civilization, or, or at least severely disrupt uh, civilization. Um, Excuse me, how could AI mm -hmm. destroy civilization? You know, it would be something the same way that humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but it might be relegated to a small corner of the world. When Homo sapiens became much smarter than other primates, it pushed all the other ones into small habitats. They're just in the way. Couldn't AI, even in this moment, just with the technology that we have before us, be used in some fairly destructive ways? You could make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technology is needed right now. People just think this stuff is of, of sci-fi novels and movies and it's so far away, but yeah. every time I hear you speak, it's like, well, no, this stuff is sitting, it's, it's right here. Probably a bigger risk than, than being hunted down by a, a drone is that uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda. Uh, that would not seem like pro propaganda. So these are deep fakes. Yeah, influence the direction of society influence elections, artificial intelligence. Just 
hones the message, hones the message, check, looks at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. But within milliseconds, it could it can um, adapt its message and, and shift and react to news. And, and there's so many uh, social media accounts out there that are not people. Like, how, how do you how do you know it's a person, not a person? One reason that regulators and others are a little bit in denial about this is the speed, the pace of change. What is the consequence of that speed of change? The way in which a regulation is put in place is slow and linear. Right. And we are facing an exponential threat. And if you, if you have a linear response to an exp exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. That, in a nutshell, is the issue. You're a neuroscience company, and you're working to build basically an interface to the brain. Yeah. Electrode to neuron interface at a mic micro level. OK, what is it? Like, I'm going to have like a plug in my head that's going to fit into mm -hmm. a hard drive? Like, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. Ch a chip and a bunch of tiny wires. This, this would be implanted surgically. And it would do what? Could you input? Could you download Jim? Mm-hmm. Yes. What, what, what? <laughs> the long-term aspiration for Neuralink was, would be to achieve a symbiosis with uh, artificial intelligence. Um, and to achieve a sort of democratization of, of intelligence uh, such that it is not monopolistically held in a purely digital form by governments and, and large corporations. Basically, an effort for man to merge with machine in yes. a healthy way. Yes. To beat machines, you basically have to merge with machines. Most likely, yes. Essentially, how do we ensure that the future constitutes the, the sum of the will of humanity? Um, and so if we have billions of people with the high bandwidth link to the AI extension of themselves, it would actually make everyone hyper smart. OK, so you so This is very esoteric. Yeah, no, but you say this is more psi than phi. So you believe we're headed this I way. I believe this can be done. When will I be able to get the interface implant? It's probably on the order of a decade. I mean, and by the way, you, you kind of have this already in, in a weird way in that you have uh, a digital tertiary layer in the form of your phone, your, your computers. You basically have this, these computing devices that form a, a tertiary layer on your cognition already. So wait, we have that imprint in our brain, uh, implant in our brain. Yeah. We download most of Jim. Then could I, in the digital Jim, yes. could I make him a skilled Mandarin speaker or a mm -hmm. tuba player yes. and re-upload it to him? Yeah. Along the way, uh, Neuralink is going to help solve a lot of uh, ner nerve problems. Like so, uh, in fact, we're just talking about okay, what would it take to uh, really solve for uh, spinal cord injuries? We already know how to do this: uh, implant electrodes into the motor cortex of the brain, um, and then bypass the the severed section of the of the spine and have uh, effectively local microcontrollers near the muscle groups. It could restore full limb functionality. Very exciting what can be done here. And, and it's just memory. Like, as people get older, they lose their memory. And so it's saying it's like, it's incredibly sad when a mother forgets her own children. Um, and that can be solved too. I've seen you speak in person. We've watched some of your interviews. Like, sometimes you seem visibly sad about what's happening. I think we should try to take the set of actions that are most likely to make the future good for humanity. I'm pro I'm pro human. Um, and my faith in humanity has been a little shaken this year. Uh, but I'm still pro humanity. You've said that this has been the toughest year for you, the most sort of taxing yeah. year for you. Like, why? Well, I mean, Tesla really faced a severe uh, thre threat of death uh, due to the Model 3 production ramp. Essentially, the, the company was bleeding money like crazy, and, and just if, if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, uh, we would die. Uh, and it was extremely difficult to solve them. How close to death did you come? We were there within single-digit weeks. 22 hours a day, or like what, how many hours? I was working, yeah, so seven days a week, so sleeping in the factory. Uh, I worked every from the, I worked in the, I worked in the paint shop, general assembly, body shop. Do you ever worry about yourself imploding, like it's just yeah, too yeah. much? Yeah, absolutely. No one should put this many hours into work. This is not good. And people should not work this hard. I'm not, they should not do this. This is too, it's very painful. Painful in what sense? It's, it, hurts my, it hurts my brain and my heart. It hurts. This is not recommended for anyone. I just did it because if I didn't do it, then Tesla, good chance Tesla would die.
Do you believe in God? I believe. I believe there's some there's some explanation for this universe, which you might call God. Elon Musk, thank you for an amazing conversation. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, sir. Fascinating. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, sir. Help you guys uh, with that loading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.